Hello and welcome to the SRC Learning Essentials video series. This video is part of our tips on network and service router security. Today's topic is management access filters and control plane module filters. Before we begin, this slide provides a brief overview about the SRC program for those of you who may not be familiar with it. You can learn more by visiting our website at networks.nokia.com src. In this video, we will discuss the control plane module and introduce the control plane module filters and management access filters and how they are used on the Nokia 7750 service router. Once that is complete, we will move to our lab environment to demonstrate a control plane management filter and a management access filter case study. All right, let's talk about the control plane module, or known as the CPM. It is considered the brains of the Nokia 7750 service router and is used to exchange routes to construct a network topology which is referred to as the forwarding information base or FIB. The CPM downloads the FIB to each input output module which is then used to perform data forwarding. The CPM also maintains states for multiple internal and external processes. As an example, BGP neighbor states, OSPF adjacency states are all maintained by the CPM. The CPM card has two major functions to perform computation and memory to hold control plane information. This is why it is very important that the CPM module is protected from attacks, unwanted packets, and unauthorized access that can degrade the performance of the 7750 service router or even make it unavailable. Okay, here are some threats that the CPM needs to be protected from. Such as, for instance, an unwanted OSPF adjacency or unwanted packet types that could send incorrect routing information, causing suboptimal routing. Perhaps an unauthorized access could be given to a management station that is not authorized to make configuration changes to the router. There are two types of management access to a router, in-band, where you would access the router as the same path traversed by the data plane, and out-of-band, where you access the router from a dedicated channel that would require its own network. Let's take a look at one of the ways we can protect the CPM from some of these common threats. CPM filters is a hardware filter that is used to restrict control traffic, such as routing protocols, based on IP or MAC addresses. They are also used to control management access, where in-band management is used. Filters have to be manually configured for every single traffic flow type, and has three types of filters, MAC for layer 2, which is process first, and then layer 3 filters for both IPv4 and IPv6. Here is a CPM filter example. In this case, the network operator has decided to allow OSPF adjacency from router R2 subnet, but deny access to router R3 subnet. We can see that router R2 sends an OSPF hello packet to the Nokia 7750 service router. The 7750 service router sees that the packet is a control plane packet that needs to be processed and sends the packet to the CPM. The CPM filter checks and verifies it has an entry to accept any OSPF packets from router R2. The packet is processed, therefore starting the OSPF state machine. Router R3 also sends an OSPF hello packet to the Nokia 7750 service router, and the Nokia 7750 service router sends the control plane packet to the CPM to be processed, where the CPM filter checks and sees an entry to deny any OSPF packets from router R3 and the CPM filter will silently drop the packet. Therefore, no OSPF adjacency is formed. Okay, let's talk about another type of filter that can restrict packets being received out of band on the CPM Ethernet interface. Management Access Filters, or MAV, is a software-based filter that applies rules to allow management traffic only from authorized IP addresses. Management Access Filter applies to packets from all ports, including the Management Ethernet port. These filters can limit the out-of-band management of the router to specific protocols and nodes and thus protecting against out-of-band threats. There are three types of filters, MAC, IPv4, and IPv6, process the same order as CPM filters. Okay, here is our example of the management access filters. Management access filters can prevent unauthorized access from certain management stations. In this example, the network operator has applied a management access filter on the Nokia 7750 service router with an entry to allow management access from IP address 192.168.22.1 using the protocol Telnet and an entry to deny Telnet traffic from 192.168.23.1. 
As we can see from the example, an authorized user attempts to access the Nokia 7750 service router from the out of band network using the IP address 192.168.22.1 with its protocol Telnet. The map checks the entries in the policy and sees it has an entry to permit this IP address and the connection is accepted. An unauthorized station with the IP address of 192.168.23.1 using protocol Telnet attempts to gain access to the Nokia 7750 service router. And the math filter checks the entries in the policy and sees an entry to deny this IP address and the connection is dropped. Well, let's take a look at how packets received from in-band traffic and out-of-band traffic is managed by the control plane management filter and the management access filter. We can see as packets that are received in-band and being routed to the CPM are processed by the CPM filters. First the MAC filter and then the IP filter which is either IPv4 or IPv6. Then the final check at the MAP. We can also see that traffic arriving at the management ethernet interface from the out-of-band network is only processed by the MAP. And if any of these packets from both the MAP and the CPM are accepted, the packet is sent to the CPU to be processed. All right, let's move on to the hands-on exercises. This is for our first use case and is for using CPM filters. Our network operator has been advised that we need to have OSPF enabled on all interfaces for router R2, but to not accept any OSPF packets from router R3. We can see that from the illustrations we have router R2 that has an OSPF adjacency with router R1 and router R3. We need to set up a CPM filter that will block any OSPF adjacency from router R3 but allow OSPF adjacency from router R1. Let's start the exercise. Okay, let's get started with the CPM filter use case. We have router R1, router 2, and R3. We're currently on router R2. Let's get started with the show router OSPF neighbor. And we can see that we have neighborships with router R1 and router R3. Okay, let's go to configure system security and CPM filters. And we'll do an info detail to show you what the default settings are. We can see that we have a default action of accept by default. We will now set the default action to drop. Okay, now we'll move into our IP filter because we want to filter on an IP address. And we'll create the entry 10 and use the word create to create the entry. Entries are in sequence, so we'll start with a low number of entry. Now we'll do a match on the source IP address of the 10.1.5.0 slash 24 network. And we'll do a match protocol, OSPF, IGP, and we'll match on the OSPF protocol only. And we want to go back and set our action to accept. Okay, so we'll just take a quick look at what we've created. For our entry 10, we'll see that we have action accept, match protocol, SPF, for the source IP, and now we'll go into the IP filter. It's in shutdown mode. We want to apply the filter now. We will do a no shutdown. All right, let's go back and take a look at our OSPF neighborship on R2. We can see we still have the full two neighborships with router R1 and router R3. We'll wait for it to time out. We'll come back after a time. We can see that it's now timed out and router R3 is no longer have a neighborship. So let's go to router R3, show router OSPF neighbor. We can see that it's trying to form an OSPF and neighborship and it's in an init state because it's not receiving any packets from router R2. Let's go to router R1, have a quick look, show router OSPF neighbor. We can still have a full neighborship with router R2. Well, let's talk about our next use case, the use case of the management access filters. In this particular use case, we have two routers that have connections from an out-of-band network of 192.168.189.0 slash 24. 
the network operator has been advised to only allow the network of 138.120.0.0/16 to be able to telnet to router R5. All other telnet connections should be dropped. We are to use a default action of permit in this use case. If using a default action of deny, take special attention of entries in the policy to not lock yourself out of the Nokia 7750 service router. Router R1 will attempt to connect to the router R5 through the management network and be dropped, while the management station should connect successfully. Okay, we'll start with the management access filter use case. We'll do a show users to show that we are currently logged in via the 138 network. On my management station, I'll go to router R1. Do the show router management interface. I can see that my management interface I'm going to use for this exercise, the 189 network.166. I will tell that to router R5. I am successful in telnetting in. I will log back out. Now we will move forward with configuring the management access filter. So configure system security management access filter. We can see we have the different options for IP filter, IPv6 and MAC. I will use IPv filter since we're going to be using IPv4 to match. I will best practices to shut down. We'll go into entry 10. It gives me an error saying I must create a default action before continuing. I will create the default action of permit. In this use case, I will create an entry of 10. I will match on my source IP address for my for my 138.120.0.0/16 network. I will explicitly match on my Telnet protocol, so using protocol TCP, destination port of 23, action will be permit. I will now create a second entry. And in this case, I want to match on the Telnet protocol again, match TCP, destination port 23. In this case, I'm going to set my action to deny. Let's go back. Have a quick look at everything I've configured. I have my entry 10 so to match on the 138 network. Any other telnet protocol will deny. And then the default action is permit. I'll do a no shutdown. The fact that I am able to, I'm still connected, shows that my 138 network is working correctly. I will now go to router R1 and try to tell net where I am unsuccessful. I will now go and do a show system security management access filter where and show the IPv filter where I can show some statistics as far as a matching on the entries. I can see I matched on my 138 network and I've had some deny matches on my entry 20. Thank you for watching this video on MAF and CPM filters. Content for this video is adapted from the Nokia SRC course Network and Service Router Security. You can learn more about the complete four day course and register for it from the SRC websites provided here. If you're interested in obtaining an SRC certification, this table identifies the recommended courses and required exams for each of the five available certifications in the program.